Sharon. Lovely to see you again. The Continental that we meet at the beginning is probably one of the worst Continentals in the world. It's decrepit, it's corrupt, it's messy. Cormac, who's running it, is amoral and vindictive. Shoot Mr. Avery for me. Sir, the rules. Oh, yeah, the rules, yeah. Gentlemen, we fell in love with this idea where it was set in the 70s because it felt like it was a way to expand the world but not step on what we had in the movies. The big ask from the producers, Basil Iwanek and Erica Lee, is we want to know more about the inner workings of this hotel. What we learn in the Continental is how Winston and his personality, how does he build this hotel in his image? You know, usually when a bunch of guys in masks drug me and throw me in the back of a truck and fly me over the Atlantic, they at least offer me a cup of coffee. Yeah, of course. Sharon, being the man. Just like in the films, the hotels mirrored Winston's soul. Rules. Without them, we live with the animals. We wanted the contents all to mirror beginnings of Winston and who he was. I don't think fans should miss this for a second because they are going to see things that were there that now they know the history of. Watching the character of Winston being brought into the underbelly of this crime family from London is really fascinating. My God. This is the love of my life. You protect her with your life or don't come back. You got my word. is such a huge part of the movies. It's our hero location and something that fans are always asking more about. This kingdom is mine and mine alone. It felt like everyone was intrigued by John Wick and then underneath it, they're intrigued by the character of the Continental. When we started thinking about the prequel, we went back to watch the films and we realized, man, we're not giving the audience anything. It's just almost like assumed fact that they would know why this hotel was here and the history behind it. A lot of the elements of the Continental from the series are elements that we had in the films, just weren't really addressed. John Wick, excommunicado. Hi. It really comes down to one line when Winston says, I have served and been a beacon of order and stability to our industry for over 40 years. So I pulled my calculator out and I was like, well, the movies came out in like 2015, 2016. What was happening in New York City 40 years prior? Clever. And landed right on this article about Fear City and the peril that the city was in, the bankruptcy, the violence, the Bronx burning. Winston, run! And so it was one of those aha moments where we went, wait a minute. What if we go back to the beginning? What if we set this in a time far away from John Wick, but also start to plant the seeds of how John Wick comes into this universe? Crazy thing about the John Wick franchise is that it's not based on any underlying IP. It's not based on a graphic novel series or books or it's a remake. So every piece of information we give the audience is the first time they're experiencing it. Every little kind of breadcrumb we give them, they are intrigued by. I'd like a tasting. I need something robust, precise. Sharon, would you help set the mood for our new guest? Of course, sir. If you're a fan of the John Wick film series, I think you will really appreciate the things in the Continental. The rules, the danger, the violence, the fun. How are we supposed to believe a guy in an ass guy can pull this off? It's a cravat. <laughs> As filmmakers, we always wanted to explore the behind the scenes of the Continental. Who cleans the rooms, the hotel? Who gets the mail? There's another kind of upstairs, downstairs of the world that we just started to explore and could go much deeper in as well. Counter to the fact that the John Wick movies are going so fast. In some ways, the first three films only take place in like a two week radius. So we don't have time to slow down and talk about the mythology. And so in some of these other pieces of content we're doing, including the series and the spinoff, we're gonna spend more time trying to dig deeper and answer some of the questions that the audience has because we've kind of just threw out a lot of the mythology and people are intrigued by it, but we have to go deeper.
bigger than goons or bookies or broken fingers. They control everything. They have eyes and ears everywhere. They make people disappear. You thought you could outsmart the high table. How foolish of you. Albert and our showrunners were incredibly respectful of the franchise. Tell me what you need. Love. Can you dig it? You know, living up to fan expectations, so that's a pressure and challenge. But then you have to create a new world. What seeds have we planted in the films that we can kind of go backwards and exploit? Red light active. We have a new rule about if the red light goes on, you can kill on hotel grounds. Inimicus on continental grounds. Red light has been activated. Let's take this house. The expansion of the hotel itself was something that was kind of a process because it's an odd shaped building, right? It's a triangle that doesn't look very big, but you have to make it feel ominous. And that's what's interesting about the Continental. When <laughs> you watch the movies and when you watch our series, all of that stuff really fits in that building. Are there these really big rooms? That's kind of the mystical quality of the Continental. Oh, whoa, whoa. Is this how you get to the uh, gift shop? We see the whole schematic, the early designs, like where the pivotal points are, how the rooms are laid out. We learn the DNA of the hotel, which is really fun and nothing that we've ever explored in the movies before. There's everything in that building. Who knows what else he's got in there now? We never went about it as like, okay, let's just do all these different rules. More so, let's experience the Continental through a young Winston. We had to have Winston and Sharon and really build their relationship, because that helps tell the story of the Continental Hotel. 13th floor, that's bad luck, right? I'm not superstitious. We do want to leave the audience wanting more. We do want them to be asking more questions. And so I think it's just more of kind of letting the rope out slowly. I think they're gonna love that we took the world that they know and they're familiar with and expanded it a bit more. We have just scratched the surface. I think the beauty of a hotel are there are so many rooms and arms and so many interesting characters that we hope to explore more of. We're gonna spend more time trying to dig deeper and answer some of the questions that the audience has about the history of the Continental from the films. The Continental that became the most powerful one in the world. How did that come to be? I'll see you all at the grand reopening. Mm-hmm.